worry about that because <laughs> they came from Tobago, <laughs> is it Tobago Performing Arts nice. Company, and they're here <laughs> in Trinidad to be able to, to present to us their version of Bitter Cassava, and I, I've gotten rave reviews about it, and I look forward to, to them presenting it to us this weekend and next, next weekend. We start at the Naparima Bowl this weekend. And ironically, Naparima Bowl is celebrating their 62nd anniversary, while Queen's Hall is celebrating their 60th anniversary. Something is going on with the 60s. We are celebrating our 60s. Everybody's celebrating 60s. But when the country came into fruition, <laughs> all these things would have happened and launched and all that good stuff, right? Good things. So this morning, I want to welcome the CEO, actually, of the Tobago Performing Arts Company, Mr. Elvis Rajman, as well as Colleen Cameron of Queen's Hall and Marlon De Beek of Naparima Bowl. Good morning, and thank you guys so much for joining us on the Now Morning Show. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. All right. Let me start with uh. Let me start with the with the, the theaters. Let's start with, with you, Mister Mister DB. How are you doing this morning? Congratulations. You guys are celebrating I'm sixty-two good. years at the Naparima Bowl. Uh, Actually, it's sixty years we're celebrating at the Naparima Bowl. Oh, you're all you're all sixty. We're sixty years. All right. And we nice. have open Naparima Bowl. Yes, the other way around. All right, sorry about that. The Bowl celebrates its 60th yes. anniversary this year. We opened 1962, August 27, which was just four days before we became independent in Trinidad and Tobago. So it's a big deal for us. Um, yeah. Bowl has been really pushing through, and to have the, the Tobago Performing Arts Company here in Trinidad doing bit of cassava, which is a very popular piece, as you know, by Dr. Ifibo Wilkinson. Yeah. It is an absolute pleasure to have this company in the bowl as its first performance in Trinidad. <laughs> <laughs> at Definitely. Bowl. You know, I must say that. You know, I must say that, Colleen, right? Yes. I, so we we really understand happy. that. <laughs> We're really happy. Um, <laughs> we celebrate with all the, the actors, all the performers, everyone behind this wonderful company. They arrived in Trinidad yesterday and they had their first sort of orientation and feeling all the space yesterday. Some of them is back home for them because they are from their, their in Trinidad, right. they're from Trinidad, yeah. the island. And um, they've been at the bowl before, so but we were happy to, to welcome the entire company and uh, really looking forward to seeing a wonderful production this weekend. Nice. And Colleen Cameron, uh, so 62 for Queen's Hall. 62, 63rd actually. Because we, uh, we opened in 1959, June right. 4th, 1959. Okay. So we are just a week away from our anniversary. Nice. Well, congratulations on that one time in advance. Uh, tell me, I, I know Marlon said he's happy to be the first in Trinidad to, to be hosting the, the Tobago Performing Arts Company for Bitter Cassava. But uh, we can also say that we saved the best for last, you know, in the terms of their coming to Queen's Hall afterwards. Uh, to do the <laughs> definitely we see it as the as the grand finale as we are the grand dam so we have no problem with that at all oh my god it's all, it's all, it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> i have to make sure make sure it stay balanced my balance stay, make sure it stay balanced uh mr rajman how are you doing this morning i know that you guys are, have touched down in Trinidad am, and you're excited i am, I am to have good. this run i am good um we're excited the entire the Tobago Forming Arts Company. We're excited to be here in Trinidad, of course, as Marla would have said, we're excited to be down at the Napoleon Board. And of course, we will grace the Queens Hall with our presence on, on the week of the weekend of the third and fourth. So we're just happy to be here and share all that we have to share from Tobago in regards to what this company has to offer. And Bitter Cassava, um, we started this work, um, we presented this work over the Easter weekend in Tobago and it just went like wildfire. Um, every show sold out. Um, we had to turn people back at the at the door. Um, it was a bit kind of saddening to have to have people leave, but nevertheless, it showed the kind of interest in, in theater and in performing arts at this point in time. So we're happy to share in this now with all Trinidad brothers and sisters. And we look forward to seeing it. It's happening this weekend at Naparimo Bowl. Uh, Marlon, is it inside or outside? It's in the auditorium. Yeah. It's inside in the, in in the, the auditorium. In, now, indoor auditorium. Yeah. During during the, the height of the pandemic or when, when we were allowed to go back to theaters and you know do the fifty percent capacity and stuff like that, both Napri Mobile and Queen's Hall were able to facilitate events uh in different capacities. I know that Napri Mobile utilized a lot of the, the uh outside the, the the outside area. Amphitheater. The amphitheater. That's the word I was looking for. The amphitheater area. Uh tell me about the, the recovery strategy when it comes to events 
and theatrical productions post-COVID? Um, I think this is actually one of those strategies um, and the ministry has kind of put it in a, in a, uh, a guideline for us. Um, meaning that collaborations is very useful to put all that in the shows going. So collaboration is something that the board has been looking at um, even in the pandemic, even in, in the earlier part of this year, but people continue doing that sort of collaboration, meaning if there are key signature productions that we believe that we could partner with and that that producer comes on board, we could get that show going. We try to work very closely with the producer in terms of sort of hand-holding experience. It, all right, Marlon, you, you seem to be breaking up a bit there. I don't know if you're having connectivity yeah. issues or what, but let me jump across to Colleen. Uh, Colleen, it's as the yes, person responsible for, for, for... the foreseeable future, and once oh. we cite TFAC and others, we will do that continuously. Sure, no problem. All right, Marlon, thank you. Uh, now, Colleen, as a, as a marketing and bookings coordinator at Queen's Hall, I know that you guys made some changes as well during the pandemic in terms of uh, opening the Garden Theatre, for example. Uh, tell me about how... The, the role that Queen's Hall plays in terms of cultural tourism, be it uh, domestically or for people who want to come into the country? Yes, yeah, so uh, actually the Garden Theatre is uh, our refurbished courtyard, so the space was always available. And when our new general manager as well as the new board came in, they saw this particularly within uh, what was happening, uh, because of what was happening with the pandemic, they saw it as a way of extending um, the offerings that we have to producers and our patrons as well in terms of having this outdoor feature that can offer what we call dinner theater. So it's an, it's an outdoor setting. And in terms of the tourism aspect of it, we see it as um, actually working within when the, when the tour, um, sorry, the cruise ships and so res resume. We see it as an offering that we can have because we know that normally they come in sometimes for a day so that we see it as an offering that we can have a special production, whether during the day or the afternoon, that is uh, geared towards those tourists, as well as any business tourists that came in, that come into the, to the, uh, to the island at any point in time. So we do see it as part of, and as even our general manager uh, would say, uh, we see it as an extension of even the Magnificent Seven. So we can be the Magnificent Eight. So <laughs> that when you're making a tour of, of Port of Spain, you know, there's a city tour of Port of Spain, that the Queen's Hall, especially as it's a historic and iconic building, can be part of that um, offering to guests as well. It can be somewhere where you can be refreshed and also uh, view uh, local theater in its, in its natural uh, habitat at its way. So, so we see it as a win-win, uh, but for, both for producers in giving them another option, as well as for our visitors, local and uh, uh, foreign visitors. Thank you so much, Colin. Now, Mr. Rajman, uh, what are the challenges that you guys would have faced in attempting to move this production from Tobago to Trinidad? Um, well, this 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 production um, started off with with challenges. Um, just just in terms of how we would have started, where we'd have started to rehearse this production, um, we didn't have the ideal space at the time, mm -hmm. given the fact that we had some issues and COVID. But we we pushed through. Um, moving, of course, sixty plus. Um, cast members from Tobago to Trinidad, um, finding accommodation, adequate accommodation, whether it be in the south or in the northlands and transportation back and forth, making timelines in terms of tech rehearsals, um, rehearsals for, because we have several things we're working on. So it's just a time issue I know right now. I know the team is pretty tired because we came back in, we got back in just around like 10, 30, 11 last night. Mm -hmm. after a very long day at the Naparima Bowl. But um, they're all excited and they're all geared to go. So with all the challenges that we would have had, um, it's nothing compared to what we, the excitement we feel to be touching on the Naparima Bowl stage um, this weekend and, of course, on the Queen's Hall stage next weekend. Uh, Mr. Rajman, before we wrap up, can you just give us the dates, the exact dates and the times, the, sh the start times for the shows as well, please? So this weekend, we're at the Naparima Bowl on the 28th and 29th, and um, the shows are 7.30 and 6.30, respectively. And of course, next weekend, we're at the Queen's Hall, and that's um, the 3rd and 4th 
7.30 both nights. But I just want to plug in here now. At Queen's Hall, we have an additional feature, which is called our Tobago Micro Market, because the Tobago House of Assembly is bringing all of Tobago, all good things to Tobago, from Tobago to Trinidad. So we have a taste of Tobago Micro Market at Queen's Hall that runs from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. daily, which is on the 3rd and 4th. So you're going to come and yeah, get more information about Tobago, about the hotels, what's coming up for the upcoming carnival season, the Tobago Heritage Festival season. So it's a season where you will know you, you it's a it's a it's a space where you learn all things Tobago and just be excited about what Tobago has to offer going forward. And we look forward to it. I want to thank you all so much yes. for joining me this morning and congratulations so on all the best us, for yeah. the next two weekends coming up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Not you. a problem. That's Marlon the Beak, the operations manager in Aprima Bowl. I think he was the first to fall off there <laughs> just now. I have also Colleen Cameron, who is the marketing and bookings coordinator at Queen's Hall. And of course, the CEO of the Tobago Performing Arts Company, Mr. Elvis Rajman, joining us to share that Bitter Cassava is here in Trinidad. It's happening at Napri Mobile this weekend at Queen's Hall. Next weekend, get your tickets for it. Now it's going to be a show you do not want to miss. We take a break and we come back with more in our morning show. Stay tuned.